You see, Mr. Power, the hospitals were poisoned by me, and if you want to save them, you have to answer my riddles three, but only after you complete the gauntlet of infinite combos. Beware, the entrance is guarded by two sentinels, one of which only tells the truth, the other of which was born on a Wednesday. Only you may find me then with this antidote, and- ah. Huh, didn't break. Sometimes the simple solution, straightforward one is just the best answer. Like Miram, Sentinel Worm. Miram Sentinel Worm is three green, blue, red for a legendary creature, Dragon Spirit 6-6 six, six, with flying in Ward 2. It says whenever another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, you create a token that's a copy of it, except the token isn't legendary if that dragon is legendary. Count yourself lucky if you have never had to face down the barrel of one of these decks, and count yourself even luckier the fact that I made you one that costs barely anything. This deck specializes in putting token copies of whatever dragon you put onto the board, putting threat after threat after threat onto the board. There is no hiding from the value that it creates. It is going to create an unstoppable force of flying dragons with such amazing abilities that your opponents will not know how to stop you once you do get going. So how do we all but guarantee that they just can't really stop us? Well, we're going to use things like Niv-Mizzet, Perrin. Niv-Mizzet, Perrin. For blue, 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 red, 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 you get a legendary creature, Dragon Wizard. It's a 5-5 that says this spell can't be countered. It also has flying, and whenever you draw a card, Niv-Mizzet, Perrin deals one damage to any target. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, you draw a card. So this bad boy happens to be a legendary creature. And that doesn't matter because Miram will essentially just remove the legendary clause from the tokens that Miram creates. This allows you to create more powerful dragons of the exact same type. Then you can follow it up with things like Dracus the Butcher. That way our power gets doubled twice. Savage Vent Maul, that's six red mana, six green mana on attack. Lozan, Dragon's Legacy, doing double duty for any direct damage needs as long as it's not to a commander. And then Dracuseth Maw of Flames to deal an inordinate amount of damage to a lot of targets wherever we can. There are plenty of other power stations in this deck that you can just slap out and get a copy of at any given moment, but the only thing is that these are some of the legendary ones and Savage Vent Mall isn't, but I really wanted to talk about it. These things are just gonna get you some crazy, crazy useful triggers whenever you attack or whenever they enter or whenever you cast another dragon. There is no real downside to doing any of this either because you are getting a two for one deal on every single dragon that you happen to have enter the battlefield. And on top of that, legendary creatures can now have duplicates built into your commander. Most people at this point would want to get rid of your commander, but it has ward two which makes it really annoying for our opponents to get rid of them. There are plenty of other things in this deck that can do really great things, but these are the ones that just generally reek of power. So you can get these in to demoralize even the most confident of opponents. <laughs> Come on, get me on the couch. <laughs> you got me good there. I can just... <laughs> okay. I see what you did there. I think... <laughs> I felt that one. <laughs> Now this prize fight doesn't necessarily mean that you have to pay full ticket admission to get into it. So let's talk about some cards that give you some crazy discounts on these dragons so you can get all of them out of your hand whenever you do get them. Dragon Lord Serpent for one in a red, you get a one free creature Goblin Shaman. It says dragon spells you cast cost one less to cast. So if it's a dragon, it costs one less. Dragon Speaker Shaman does the same thing, but it's two less. A Goblin Anarchomancer will get your red and green spells to cost one less for whatever you're doing with them. Thrix Sudden Storm, five mana plus spells cost an additional one less and then can't be countered. Semblance Anvil, as long as we're willing to get rid of a creature from our hand forever, we can go ahead and make all creatures cost two less from here on out for us. In the background of Acolyte of Bahamut, this will get one dragon spell per turn costing two less. So as long as your commander is out, you can get one dragon spell per turn to cost two less, which is a good, good reduction, regardless of if it's just once per turn. You can get any other spell out that you'd rather have, so use it. Or you can just cheat these things in. Don't worry about their cost, just cheat the cost. Get them in for whatever. Does it cost 12? Not anymore. It costs 4 with Quicksilver Amulet. Quicksilver Amulet. For 4 mana, you can get an artifact that you can pay for, tap it, and put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. You just pay the 4, tap it, and put a creature from hand into play. Marum doesn't care if you cast it or not, it just needs to enter the battlefield, and as long as it does, it'll make a token copy of it. And it gives them flash. Okay, and it gives them flash. <laughs> you, can do, you can do it at, at, I'm gonna do it now. You can do it at instant speed. You do not have to wait for it to be on your turn. So you can wait before the turn passes back to you and then 
put it in. Or you can wait until somebody spends a little bit too much mana to try and get rid of Miram, and then before it resolves, you can put it in to get your copy, so you still have a copy by the time you're done with it. Or you can do Doors of Durin. Whenever you attack, scry two, and then you may reveal the top card of your library. If you put it on top and you know it's not gonna be a dragon, don't do it, but you can still reveal it, and then if it is a creature card, you just put it in, tapped and attacking, you get the top deck, and you go ahead and you get that copy of it as well. So the first original is going to be attacking and the copy will not be. Again, since it doesn't require you to cast these, you can just have them enter the battlefield. Meaning we're gonna try and flicker. Ghostly flicker for two into blue, you get an instant that says exile two target artifacts, creatures, and or lands you control. Then return those cards to the battlefield under your control. So with ghostly flicker, you don't really have to worry about getting any more creatures out or having more creatures in hands. You can just double up again what you already have on the field. You can get up to two creatures, artifacts, and or lands flickered back and untapped. So if you really need the land, you can have it come back untapped. But for the most part, you're gonna get two creatures exile them, return them immediately, and then get another copy of each of those creatures. Not only just Ghostly Flicker, but you can do Illusionist Stratagem, you can do Planar Incision, you can do Blur, you can do Teferi's Time Twist, but Teferi's Time Twist does go at the beginning of the next end step, so it'll be just kind of gone until it comes back. But each of these can allow you to flicker it and get another copy of whatever dragon that you have out there. Or you could do things like Repeatable Flicker, such as Void Walk, Cypher, put it on a dragon. A lot of your dragons are going to be pretty dang evasive. So if it hits again, you can go ahead and do another dragon. Or you can get Nefalia Smuggler. For four mana, you can tap and just flicker something. Really easy, really simple. You can, again, do this one at instant speed, but you don't have to worry about having, you know, just the one or two copies of whatever dragon you're going to have out there. You can keep getting more and more and more of some of these super impactful dragons. Now each of these cards do some really fun things. And like I told you, as I was going through, there's plenty of ways that you can get a lot of great value out of your dragons and out of everything that you have. But before we get into all that, let's go ahead and see what we can talk about for our mid roll break. We didn't pay much, but it cost us everything. Entire villages burnt to a crisp. Fear in the skies above, never trusting a bright sunny day again. And I plan to find the source of it all. Years of searching, finding every hidden clue in every corner of the world. We've built a community of learners and gatherers, those willing to tread where things usually shouldn't have to go. Amongst all the links we created in the Discord, we all subscribe to one philosophy, the power and budget TCG. And while the journey may never truly be done, subscribing, liking, commenting, will keep you updated on everything that is to come. I gotta get into again. Oh yeah, categories. This category is gonna mostly be more copies. First we're gonna get Sean, Father of Synths. Sean, Father of Synths. For three blue red, you get a three four legendary creature human scientist that says whenever you attack, you may create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of target attacking legendary creature you control other than Sean. Except it's not legendary and it's a synth artifact creature in addition to its other types. When Sean leaves the battlefield, exile all synth tokens you control. At first it seems like, oh, that's not great. You just get one copy of something. If you copy your commander, it'll enter the battlefield as a non-legendary copy. It is also a synth. Now you can use any of those flicker spells that I told you about. Flicker your commander again. Well, now you'll make a non-legendary token copy of your commander that isn't a synth. Now, I think that's a pretty good turn. Another similar thing that'll get you more similarly copied commanders is Reflections of Litjara. Reflections of Litjara is four into blue for an enchantment that says, as Reflections of Litjara enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever you cast a spell of the chosen type, copy that spell. A copy of a permanent spell becomes a token. While this will not get us any additional legendary dragons, it will help us with the non-legendary dragons and Miram itself. You see, if you cast Miram with reflections out, it will create a legendary copy of your commander, while the original is on the stack still. Then the original resolves with the token copy on the battlefield. The token copy will see a non-token Miram entering the battlefield, and then make a non-legendary token copy of it. 
You can then choose to sacrifice a legendary token copy to state-based actions and resolve the stack. This means by the end of the madness, you have two Mirams on the field, and now you get to make two copies for each non-token dragon that enters the battlefield. Honestly, the opportunities aren't endless, but they are sure available. And then finally, you have Genesis Ultimatum. Get your team or five color. What is it? One, two, one, two, three, one, two. You can look at the top five cards of your library, and then you can put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield. Not sure if that needs to be said, a lot of these cards cost six or seven mana, so getting the next five of them, even if it's just a five land ramp, not bad. You're going to be getting five dragons that each enter with a token copy of itself. Well worth putting in, but also I can get it if you want to cut it for some of these other cards because we're about to go into the upgrade. So first thing, we're going to get doubling season. Obviously, you're going to want to put a doubling season in here. You're making token copies every single time you do something. You're going to want to do that twice. And if it enters with counters, it'll enter with double counters. And if we're also going to be doubling tokens, we might as well do parallel lives. I mean, we're in green. We might as well spend the same amount as a doubling season to do the thing again. But these are some obvious ones people want to add in when they do that as well. So let's go over some more obvious ones. FASA. Obviously, you're going to want to be able to do a Conjurer's Closet type of effect. Uh-oh, spoiler alert, Conjurer's Closet. We're putting both of them in the upgrades because obviously we want to be able to keep flickering our dragons at end step and keep making more and more good ones. Not only does it help us get those dragons to get more token copies, they're also going to keep them untapped so we have them for blocking by the time that we get to our next turn. We could also do Helm of the Host. We're going to copy our commander and it already enters as a non-legendary copy, which just kind of makes sense for us because if we can get Miram to make another Miram, that means every single combat, we're just going to keep doubling our commander's viability. But um, these are the only upgrades you could ever include in this deck, so don't tell me in the comments below that there's others, because why would you? Anyway, um, that's it. <laughs> Straightforward ending too, I guess.